My name is Michelle, a 39-year-old janitor. I've been working for a housekeeping company that serves corporate offices since I was 20. And I'm a single woman in her late 30s, about to hit 20 years of service. The reason I chose this job was to care for my mother, who fell ill. We were a family of three, just my mother, brother, and me, in a single-parent household. When my mother fell seriously ill, I had to drop out of vocational school and arrange time to accompany her to medical appointments and assist her. I chose this job only because it allowed me to secure time to care for my mother. But now, I'm truly glad I landed here. My boss and colleagues are understanding of my situation and always interact with me warmly, calling me Michelle Sweetie. I do have some staff that work under me, and they are also adorable. I thought there was no better workplace than this. My mother passed away when I was 25, and my brother was 19. It was around the time when fall ended, and winter began. Shocked by the loss of my mother, I started to take more time off work. The company was about to enter their busiest season with our year-end deep cleaning. Despite the timing, my colleagues at the company reassured me, saying, It's okay. We'll wait for you to feel better. I appreciated their concern, but I just wanted to shut myself away. I wanted to go after my mother. But I had a younger brother I had to take care of. Out of pity for him, who lost his mother before adulthood, I pulled myself together and managed to keep working. At the time, my brother was still in college. I looked out for him, paid for his school textbooks as he moved grades, and drove him back home on the days he got out of class late. When he got a job, I gave him a suit as a celebration gift. I had a meager income, but I worked hard, thinking of myself as a substitute for our mother. After my mother passed away, my brother started saying things like, Why don't you quit being a janitor? And, why don't you get a better job? I think he was upset with my low income and our poor social standing. At the time, I wasn't in the best mental state to be able to change jobs, so it was very hard to hear those words. My co-workers at my job were the ones who kindly supported me throughout this. Later, my brother worked hard to find a job and secured a position at a large corporation. It was a well-known company, whose name you frequently see and hear in TV commercials and online ads. My brother's initial salary was nearly twice my wage. His joy at that time was like a little boy who had received lots of New Year's money gifts. Look at this, sis. I've surpassed you in just one month. Incredible. Check out this payslip. It's amazing, right? My brother was truly overjoyed and couldn't help but brag to others. Sis, quit your janitor job and get a good one like me. Hey, watch how you talk. I love my current job. Quit making excuses. Our salaries are no match. While I wished he could be more careful with his words, I was relieved that my brother's efforts had paid off. Sitting in front of my mother's portrait, I reported, my brother, your son, is all grown up now. But my boastful younger brother, who was so proud of his place in his own company, was heading down a dark path. He was skilled at his work and always bragged about the praise he received from his boss. Even though he had just started working for the company, I heard he was picked to participate in a big project. As his sister, I was proud of him but I noticed my brother making condescending remarks about his colleagues, and it only worsened as days passed. I'm doing well and getting recognition, but my peers? They're just slow to pick things up. If their incompetence drags my reputation down as well, it'd be unbearable. He would say such things without hesitation. It seemed more like he was looking down on the real world as a whole rather than just his workplace. If this continued, I knew it was going to hurt him big time. I took it upon myself to warn him about his attitude. I think all the new hires are about the same level, you know? You're all just starting out. 
I said. To which my brother replied, Wow, sis, you're pretty talkative for a janitor with a low-level education. And he sneered. Frustrated, I replied, Well, I've been in the workplace longer than you, so I know there isn't that much difference in people's abilities. Really? Do you have any college graduates at your cleaning company? Before you lecture me, why don't you tell them they've wasted their lives? And with that, my brother belittled me and went out for drinks. That kid. The workplace is probably going to hit him with reality soon. Despite my concerns, my brother's arrogance only worsened. It started with him feeling superior to me because his salary was higher than mine. This morphed into an incorrect self-perception of himself. He now believed that he was gifted, and it tweaked his personality. He became vocal and didn't hold back his criticism towards me. At first, I thought he was just excited about his new job, so I let it slide. However, gentle verbal warnings went over his head. So I scolded him in a serious tone. But unfortunately, there was no change in his behavior. I began to lose confidence in myself as a sister, wondering if I had failed to get involved with him in the right manner. Before I knew it, a few years had passed. I continued to work as a janitor. My brother seemed to be doing well and climbing the corporate ladder, but his contemptuous attitude towards others had significantly worsened. And then he moved in with his girlfriend and they got married. His wife also had an inflated sense of arrogance, which caused me distress. His wife was considerably younger than him, so to me, it felt like she was from a completely different generation. The first conversation we had when my brother introduced me to her was, So, you really are a janitor? Yes, I find it a fulfilling and enjoyable job. Really? Isn't it dirty? I couldn't stand it. It must smell bad. My brother, who was listening, chimed in. Right? It's unimaginable, isn't it? It's unsanitary, and she's not attractive. She doesn't have any money either. But what can I do? I am related to her. Sorry about that. I was taken aback to hear this, and don't remember much of what happened afterwards. After she left that day, I yelled at my brother. You were out of line. What do you mean I am related to her so it can't be helped? And what's up with her too? Don't you dare judge people by their jobs or income. My brother, surprised by my sudden outburst, stammered, but managed to retort. Shut up. You're a vocational school dropout, and I'm a college graduate. So is she. We can't help but look down on you. You earn less and have a bottom to your job, so you're the one leading a loser life. With that, he stormed out of the house. I cried out of sadness and frustration. The reason I dropped out of vocational school was because of our mother's illness. My brother knew that, yet his remark was so hurtful. Yes, my income is modest, but I still managed to scrape together the tuition fee for my brother's education. I did my best to take up on our late mother's role. I must have made a mistake in how I dealt with him. I looked at myself in the mirror while crying. I was bothered by the fact that he called me ugly. I have a face similar to my brother's. I'm neither beautiful nor cute, but I don't think I'm that ugly. But admittedly, I could do more in terms of self-care. If I paid a bit more attention to my looks and changed myself, would he see me different? Well, even if I dolled myself up, it's unlikely my brother's personality would change. Rather, marrying a woman with similar morals probably only amplified his narcissism. While talking to my co-workers about this, I started to think that my relationship with my brother might be beyond repair. One day, I received a postcard from my brother and his wife. We've moved. I had no idea. Judging from the address, it seemed like a standalone house. What's this all about? 
they're so reserved. Had they told me, I would have thrown a celebration and even helped them move. I had something I wanted to discuss with them, too, so I decided to call him after a long time. Hello? I got your postcard. Ah. I could hear my brother's cheerful voice on the phone. It's amazing, right? A single family house at this young age. Because I'm a fast tracker. It would be impossible if it weren't me, right? Yeah, amazing indeed. It was the usual bragging, but somehow I found it nostalgic and let my brother talk as much as he wanted. I brought up my matter after that. So, I have something to talk to you about, too. Just the other day, my company got contracted to clean your office building. We might bump into each other occasionally. Heh, <laughs> good for you. You wouldn't get to step foot in such a big building otherwise, right? Good for you. He could have just ended there. There's one more thing. I got a boyfriend. What? Seriously? My brother raised his voice, sounding genuinely surprised. Yes, he's older and a wonderful man. After what you said, I started taking better care of my skin and such. He fell for me at first sight, I said jokingly. Well, then that's thanks to me, huh? Somehow he managed to take credit for this as well. Well, I wouldn't say you haven't played a part in it. I wanted to introduce my boyfriend to you. He's been eager to meet you, too, so would it be okay if we visited your place soon? We could also bring a housewarming gift. Casually mentioning this, he retorted, Eh, you're coming over? His previously cheerful tone suddenly darkened. I wondered what was going on. You do understand what your job is, don't you? Huh? Job? You mean my cleaning job? Listen, I've got a new house, which means it's clean, right? I don't want a filthy person like a janitor coming in my house. Excuse me? Is he saying that because janitors are filthy, he doesn't want one in his brand new house? I was confused. My mind went blank. Considering the dirty work you do, shouldn't you know how to refrain from visiting people's places? I'm sure your co-workers feel the same. You're out of line. That's rude. Apologize. With a blank mind, my blood started boiling in anger. I could feel my fury ready to explode. Was it a common courtesy to stay away because my job is dirty? Rude? Apologize? What the hell? I couldn't contain myself and yelled out loud. You've got some nerve to disrespect people like that. This is unacceptable. I could have handled it if it were just about me, but he was mocking my colleagues, too. I couldn't let this slide. I could tell my harsh words shocked my brother over the phone. He's always been quick to attack others, but when faced with retaliation, he stammers and falters. Do you genuinely believe that a person's worth is determined by their job? Now that's some real nonsense. Apologize to me right now. What? What the? Why are you freaking out all of a sudden? I've had enough with you. How did you turn into such a scumbag? Mom would be heartbroken. Scumbag? The real scumbag is you. Your so-called boyfriend must be some good-for-nothing guy who can't get a decent job. If he had any sense, he wouldn't even be talking to a cleaning lady. If you weren't my sister, I would never get involved with a dirty woman like you. If you weren't my brother, I would have left you in the dust a long time ago. I, I was going to say that. I'm cutting ties with you. Never contact me again. Oh, okay, got it. Goodbye then. We both said things to hurt each other. It was a petty argument, but neither of us was in the mood for a mature conversation. He tried to say something more, but I hung up on him. I prepared myself to sever ties with my brother. He is the only sibling I had in this world, but I couldn't stand him anymore. Because in my brother's eyes, I, as a janitor, have no basic human rights. 
even though we are siblings, if our morals are this different, it's best for both of us to keep a distance from now on. I'll be fine. My brother is already a full-grown adult. This is our goodbye. I had come to terms with my feelings. Several months passed since I declared my severance from my brother. By some twist of fate, I was assigned to clean the office building where my brother worked. I suppose my boss was trying to be considerate, but I really couldn't stand it. But my creed is to do the best at the work I've been assigned. Suppressing my feelings, I headed to my brother's company. The building was massive and spacious. With such a broad space, I should be able to avoid running into my brother. Even if we did meet, he probably wouldn't recognize me. Feeling slightly relieved at that thought, I switched my focus to cleaning, pushing my cart filled with cleaning supplies. It was that afternoon. While mopping the floor, I noticed a group of about five men standing by the vending machine, sipping canned coffee and talking. I'm... I really am sorry for the inconvenience caused. Enough is enough. How many years have you been with us? Consult and report before things get to a point where the whole team has to clean up your mess. Yes, sir. It's happened three times just this quarter. I, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, it looks like the guy apologizing messed up, and they all had to band together to make up for it. Good job, guys. While harboring such feelings, I kept mopping without looking in their direction. While your peers have already become team leaders, some even managers, you need to step up your game. I'm sorry. Oh, those are some harsh words. I wish they let him off the hook soon. I want to mop from here all the way down the hallway on the other side, but they're in the way. After scolding the man who had apparently made a mistake once again, they all returned to the office. When the group passed by me, I noticed a familiar face. My brother. The one who had messed up and was being scolded was my brother. No way. My brother also saw me, froze for a minute, and then went completely pale. But without saying a word to me, he quickly followed his team and left. During the rest of my shift, my mind kept drifting back to my brother. He was supposed to be the fastest rising among his colleagues, but the brother I saw earlier looked nothing but a burden to the company, a straggler. He looked like an employee who constantly made mistakes at work and was always apologizing to the concerned parties. It was an intuition I had developed from witnessing various human relationships and corporate structure for over years working as a janitor. His claim of being a competent individual was just his vanity. He must have been doing well in the beginning, at least. As I suspected, he might have been complacent and overtaken by his colleagues, tripped up when he least expected it. I think it's inevitable, given his character, he looks down on others without any hesitation. But there's no need to worry about him. My brother wouldn't need to rely on me. After all, we're strangers who've cut ties. After a few days of learning the truth, I saw my brother again. While cleaning the main lobby, my brother came down the elevator with someone. Darn, I left the bag with the samples upstairs. Um, I'll go get it. You can wait here, sir. No need, I'll go. You're useless anyway. But when you get promoted... You take care of me, okay? That again? Sir, I told you I'll go get it. The man who appeared to be his junior hopped back on the elevator to get his forgotten item. Ironic how he was nasty to me, given his past claims of being competent. I watched my brother shrinking in the corner of the lobby from afar, feeling pity. As I wiped the leaves of the lobby's decorative plants, with these thoughts in mind, my senior colleague, who was cleaning the area with me, quietly approached. Hey, isn't that your brother? Uh-huh, yes. Seems like he messed up. Let's just leave him be. Okay? 
My senior colleague, looking worriedly at my brother, returned to her own cleaning duties. Whether bothered by our sympathetic gaze, my brother, who had been shrunk in the corner, sprang up and marched over to me. Hey, janitor, what are you doing? I'm cleaning. No, I mean, why are you here? I'm working. With my curt reply, my brother became visibly angry and raised his voice. Don't you dare tell my wife that I look pathetic at work. You got that? His workplace frustrations seemed to be vented on me. The gazes of those around us gathered on my loudly ranting brother. Out of concern for the onlookers, I whispered, You're drawing attention. Shut up. Don't you, a lowly educated person, order me around. People are watching. People are watching. Oh, dear brother, please. Can you please be quiet? As I attempted to calm him down by holding his hand, he recoiled. Ew, you're filthy. Don't touch me. He continued to aggressively wipe the part I touched and continued his string of insults. You're threatening me, aren't you? You want money, right? How much do you want me to cough up? Threaten? Money? What are you talking about? I asked, dumbfounded. I told you not to tell my wife. Get it already, you idiot? Oh, that's what this is about. The constant mistakes at work, or falling behind the corporate ladder. Which one do you not want me to tell? Both, obviously. He was genuinely scared I might spill the beans about his professional demeanor to his wife. Wait, you're even lying to your own wife? Shut up. No garbage like you should speak. Garbage? What on earth? He didn't care about the eyes around us. He just kept belittling me. The stress from his job must be intense. He must feel better by looking down on me. I'm not some punching bag for you to mess with. Just then, a voice came from behind. That's rude to the cleaning staff. Shut up, huh? Who are you? Finally, noticing the abnormality around him, my brother started to look around. Perhaps he couldn't stand my brother's rudeness any longer. A man stepped out from the crowd. A well-dressed man in a suit, gray-haired and elderly. His social status was obvious. Seeing this man, my brother started to panic. The man stood beside me and gently placed a hand on my back. Dirty idiot. Such intolerable slurs. Apologize to her right now. Uh huh? But she's my sister. We're just having a family squabble. To my brother, who was flustered and trying to gloss over it, I interjected. I thought you said you cut ties with me. Shut up. My brother showed his dual nature, acting humble towards the gray-haired man, while aggressively addressing me. In response to such exchanges, the man chimed in. If it's a family issue, it concerns me as well. Huh? Pleased to meet you. I'm the gentleman dating your sister. What? He was surprised. I'm the executive vice president of the subsidiary that your company is seconding. I'm also a board member of your company. I'm sorry we didn't have a chance to introduce ourselves the other day. What? 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 My brother was in a state of panic, completely out of his depth with what was going on. Feeling a bit awkward, I shot my boyfriend a side eye. You didn't really have to step in just now. If not now, then when? Imitating a popular TV MC, he said with a warm smile. Hey, sis, is that really true? My little brother was terrified. Understandably so, since the man standing in front of him was an executive at his own company. Indeed, when we were contracted for cleaning this building, I accompanied our CEO. He, who was in charge of the contract, was interested in me. No, that's a lie. 
It's the truth. During the contract signing, I instantly fell for her, who was explaining the details on behalf of a CEO who couldn't do it well, and I asked her out. A wave of gasps and murmurs echoed through the lobby. How embarrassing. I heard you said, he's no decent man if he's dating a cleaning lady. I bet he doesn't even have a solid job when talking about me. I didn't say that. Regardless of whether you said that or not, I demand an apology for the insults you said to your sister. My brother had no choice but to listen to each weighty word from him, turning pale. You're Michelle's brother, aren't you? You shouldn't worry your sister too much. At some point, my senior cleaner had come over, and colleagues from other floors were gathering too. My brother was utterly cornered. Looking defeated, my brother could barely stand as he bowed his head towards me. I'm sorry. He was in despair. His voice was small, filled with despair, devoid of any vigor or emotion. Afterwards, my brother was transferred to a remote branch of a subsidiary company. For the sake of my boyfriend's honor, let me clarify that he had no involvement in my brother's transfer. My brother panicked when his co-workers heard his repeated insults towards me and his fear of his wife finding out about his mess at the office, causing him to make a series of mistakes at work. It seems like he's completely dropped off the fast track to promotion. His wife came crying to me when she found out about his transfer. You're dating an executive from my husband's company, aren't you? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Please bring my husband back to the head office, she begged. Of course, my answer was a firm no. Her plea fell on deaf ears. Unable to pay the mortgage with his reduced salary after the transfer, it looks like they'll have to let go of their newly built home. I have no interest in whatever happens to my brother and his wife afterwards. And I got married to my boyfriend. We're living happily in our newly built home. I'm still working as a cleaner, but I'm now less out in the work field because I've become the president of the cleaning company, the company I've always been working for. The president retired and I was nominated as a successor. I couldn't possibly be a president. I had a lot of worries, but I decided to give it my all for the company I love. No matter what anyone says, I plan to continue doing the job I love for the company I love, with my head held high. My name is Rachel, and I'm a 33-year-old housewife. My husband Adam and I have been married for four years, but we haven't had a child yet. We are currently undergoing fertility treatment, but we are having trouble conceiving a child. One day, on my way home from the grocery store, I saw a little girl, a complete stranger, squatting in front of my house. I wondered why she was out on such a cold midwinter day without a coat, so I called out to her. I said, hello, are you waiting for someone? Well, can you say your name? Selena. Your name is Selena, okay. Where's mommy? Mommy, she went somewhere. I see. Are you lost? Can you say mommy's name? Mary, 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 you mean... Mommy told me to give you this. Selena held out a piece of paper to me. I opened the letter with a trembling hand and found only the words, take care of this child for a while. No way, are you Mary's daughter? Apparently, the sender of this letter, Mary, is my older sister. Mary left home when she was 20 years old and never returned to our house. It's been like 17 years or something. Since she was a teenager, she repeatedly ran away from home, got in bad situations with men, caused financial trouble, caused us a lot of trouble. My parents and I were worried about her life, but we had no idea she'd had a child. What time did your mom say she would pick you up? I don't know. Mommy always plays with men who I don't know and doesn't come home until morning. What? Really? 
Okay, then, where's your father? I don't have a daddy. You don't have a daddy? Mommy told me to stay at this house for a while because you're her sister. I see. I took her hand and led her into the house, for the time being. She was really cold and shivering. I wonder how long she had been outside. Mary was always a selfish sister with no sense of responsibility, but I never thought she would do this to her own child. I wanted to have a child, but I couldn't. I felt a surge of anger toward Mary. Pushing these feelings aside, I turned on the stove and wrapped Selena in a warm blanket. Selena, are you hungry? I'm hungry. I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. You haven't eaten anything? I'll bring you some food right now, just a second. I heated up the pumpkin soup I made yesterday and fed it to Selena right away. It was the first time she had ever drunk pumpkin soup and she drank a lot of it, and it seemed like she really liked it. Delicious! This is delicious! Really? I'm so happy. Have as much as you want. Selena told me it was delicious to the point of overdoing it, and I felt sad when I saw her expression. I am sure that Selena was going a little over the top about how good it tasted. It seems like she wanted to make me feel good. I wondered what kind of life she usually had. I felt it was too much to ask Selena, so for now, I decided to cook her delicious food until she was full. I fed her fried chicken and omelet and rice and she ate them all, saying they were delicious and tasty. Selena seemed to be completely full, so I suggested that we take a bath. It seemed that she hadn't had a bath for a few days and her hair was greasy. Selena, how about a bath? A bath? When I said that, Selena's face seemed to tense up for a moment. You don't like taking a bath? Ah, uh, uh, no, I don't mind. Are you sure? Then I'll get you something to wear as pajamas. I hurried to the bedroom to pick out some smaller clothes and went back to the living room. But when I entered the living room, for some reason, Selena was not there. I heard water running in the kitchen, so I peeked in and saw that Selena stuck her head in the kitchen sink to wash her hair. What are you doing? That water is so cold. What? You'll catch a cold. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. Oh, you're so cold. I wrapped Selena in a blanket and took her to the bathroom. She was so surprised and wide-eyed. That's amazing. What? It's just like the house I saw on TV. The house where Selena lived apparently did not have a bathroom. It seemed like Mary had made Selena wash herself with cold tap water from the kitchen because she thought warm water would be a waste of gas money. I tried to hold back my tears as I undressed Selena and gently placed her in the bathtub. It's so warm. Are baths always this warm? Wow. It's nice, huh? From now on, you can take a bath every day. Really? I'm so happy. I warmed Selena's body in the bath and helped her get clean. Her hair was a bit tangled up, but I gave it a treatment to make it more manageable, and she was back to her lovely girl self. I dressed her in my loungewear, and while we were relaxing on the couch in the living room, Adam came home. I'm home. Welcome back. This must be the girl you told me about. I'm sorry. When Selena saw Adam, she shrank back as if frightened. It's fine. This man is my husband. He's a kind man, so you don't need to be afraid of him. I explained the situation to Adam again. What the hell? That's unforgivable. Can we keep her at our place for a while? Of course. How could she do that to such a small child? Adam and I finished talking and returned to Selena, who was curled up in the living room. And I started talking to Selena. Selena, like I mentioned earlier, this man is my husband, Adam. Please call me Uncle Adam. Good evening. The three of us will be living in this house for a while. Is that okay with you? Um, 
is it okay if I stay here? Of course. And after we get settled, you'll go to elementary school. I've never been to school. You've never been to school? What about kindergarten? I've never been to kindergarten because I'm no one. What? I can't go to school. What do you mean by no one? Selena, since she was still a small child, didn't know the details of the situation, why she was considered no one. She didn't want to talk about it. That day, I decided to let the conversation end there and let Selena just rest. The next day, I reported this to my parents. They immediately came to see me. They said, Hello, Selena. We are your grandfather and grandmother. Grandma and Grandpa? They hugged Selena, crying. She was puzzled, but she seemed to be happy. It was as if she did not know that she had grandparents. After that, I asked my parents to watch Selena and went to City Hall to obtain Mary's family register. When I checked, I found that Mary was unmarried and there was no mention of any children. It seems that Selena's birth has never been registered. She was a non-existent child who never received an enrollment notice for elementary school. So that's what Selena meant when she said she was no one. After that, I consulted with several people, including the Child Consultation Center and the Municipal Office. After various discussions and much support, Selena's family register was finally created. Selena, you can go to elementary school now. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. By that time, it had already been more than a month since Selena came to our home, but she hasn't opened up to us much. She always seemed to be skittish every time Adam or I moved. And not only that, whenever she made a mistake, she would apologize to an unusual degree, curl her body up and cover her head. Mary must have done something painful to her in the past. Selena can't forget that experience. Selena, you don't have to apologize so much. Uncle Adam and I will never get mad at you and we won't hit you, ever. Really? Promise? Of course, I promise. After that, Selena's timidity didn't change, but as time went by, she gradually became more talkative and even smiled more. Then one day, Selena blurted out, I wonder when she will come for me. Hearing those words, I felt sad. Even though Mary treated her so badly, she still wanted her mom. Since Selena's arrival, every day has been a joyous time for me. We wanted so much to have children and treated Selena like our very own daughter. We wanted her to live here with us for a long time. The day after this happened, Selena received an invitation to enter elementary school. I was relieved that I would finally be able to give Selena the same school life as other children. Now that that's decided, we need to get her ready to go to school. We need to buy a school bag, stationery, and lots of clothes. What? Selena, let's go shopping today for new clothes and stuff. I can get new clothes? I've already got some clothes. It's okay. This isn't enough. If you go to elementary school, you'll need more comfortable clothes. Then I'll accompany you as the luggage carrier. Selena and Adam and I went to the shopping mall and got her everything she needed for school. I was having so much fun preparing for the school entrance that I ended up buying a lot of clothes, stationery, etc. The three of us were laughing and saying that we had bought too many things as we headed home. Then, to my surprise, I saw Mary standing in front of our house. Mom? Sis? Oh, welcome home. It's not welcome home. What the hell were you thinking? How dare you come here? Hey, 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 calm down. Don't yell at me, it's just pathetic. Who do you think you're blaming for all of this? First, you need to apologize to Selena. Oh, Selena. Mary only took one look at Selena but didn't even make eye contact with her. What are you trying to do? 
Well, we can't just stand here talking, so let me in the house. I'll do it even if you don't tell me. Let's go, Selena. Anyway, I decided to let Mary in and ask her what was going on. Is this guy your husband? He's a nice guy. Nice to meet you. I'm Adam. I don't know how to say this at our first meeting, but you are an unfit parent to treat your child like that. You are so cocky, my brother-in-law. You're a stranger. You can't talk to me like that. I don't care about that. You didn't even feed her well, did you? How could you do such a thing to your own child? Single mothers have a hard time. I raised her well. You have no right to complain. You said you raised her well? You just neglected her. Mary was deeply annoyed at being blamed by Adam and me. Her inability to recognize what she had done left me scratching my head and wondering what the hell we were all thinking. I asked Selena how she felt about seeing Mary and she seemed to be unable to look at Mary directly. Like the same as before, she shrunk and shivered. I assumed originally that she missed her mother, but I sensed that perhaps this was not the case. While I was thinking about it, Mary opened her mouth. She said, You guys don't have kids, do you? No, but so what? I'm going to give you this child. What? I've raised her through the toughest baby years of her life. You'll be lucky to have an older kid now. Do you even know what you're talking about? I know what I'm saying. I'm saying that I'm going to give you poor, childless people a little kid. You're disgusting. Unbelievable. Oh, so you don't want her? I'm not going to give her back to you, even if you ask me. I made a family register, and she is going to elementary school next month. I will make her happier than she was when she was with you. Oh, you made a family register? Of course I did. Why didn't you file a birth certificate? Because if I did, they would know I have a child, right? I didn't want to mess with the family register. For such a selfish reason? She was not allowed to go to kindergarten or elementary school because of that. There's nothing wrong with not going to school. It's just called active truancy. It's not worth talking to you. Apparently, Mary had broken up with Selena's father before she gave birth to Selena without registering with him. Mary left Selena alone so many times in order to date guys, pretending to be unmarried and childless so that she can marry a new man and raise her kid. I said, we'll take Selena. Don't come see us again. Then 10 million. I'm giving you a person, so 10 million is a small price to pay, right? What are you talking about? You're going to sell your daughter for money? Of course I'm going to sell her for money. I'm not going to pay you. Selena is a human being. When I refused, Mary said she would take Selena home with her. She said, then I'll take Selena with me, lock her up in the house again, and have her wash her body with cold tap water. I won't let you do that. Okay, ten million. Okay, well, I can't get it for you today, so you'll have to come back later to pick it up, and I'll keep her here until then. Well, that's okay. I don't want to be bothered with her anyway. I had no intention of paying, but I lied quickly to keep Selena from being taken away. Mary might come back to take Selena again. From that day on, Adam and I thought about what we could do. And before taking action, we decided to check Selena's feelings. Selena, do you want to go back to your mommy? I don't want to go back. Mom scares me. She always bumps into me and says all kinds of mean things. I don't want to go back. I see. The other day you said you wondered when your mother would come for you, so... That's because I thought that if mommy came, I'd have to go back to that house. I wanted to stay here forever. I understand. Then I'll do my best for you to live with us from now on. Having confirmed Selena's feelings, we decided to first investigate Mary's background with an investigative firm that Adam knew. 
It was then we found out that Mary was now engaged to an elite lawyer. We came up with a plan and began working behind the scenes to keep Mary from finding out. A week later, when everything was ready, we lied to Mary and told her that we had the money and we were ready to meet. On the day of the meeting, I invited Mary to my house. I asked my parents to come and take care of Selena during the meeting. She asked me, Do you have the money ready? I won't give you, Selena, and I won't pay you either. What? I came all the way here because you said you had the money ready. Now give me the money. Do you have any idea how heartbroken Selena is? And then you end up selling her for money? Unbelievable. How I raise my kid is none of your business. Children grow up even if they are left alone. You just don't understand because you don't have kids. You didn't tell your boyfriend that you have a child, did you? Of course not. He's an elite lawyer and we're getting married next year so we can live happily ever after. Don't bother us, okay? What would he think if he knew what you just said? What? Then Mary's boyfriend, the elite lawyer, opened the door and walked in. He said, Don't tell me what you just said is true. Did you lie to me? What's going on? Why are you here? You said you were unmarried and childless. I've never been married. I just happened to have a child by mistake. By mistake? What a horrible woman. Unbelievable. Don't say that. I was almost married to you without knowing you cheated on me. Of course, I'm breaking off the engagement. You cheated me, so you'll have to pay me alimony. Broken engagement? Alimony? Wait a minute, please, don't leave me. Shut up. I can't marry a woman who treats her child like that. I don't even want to see your face. Why are you... Rachel, you brought him here. Why did you do this to me? Because I knew I couldn't do it the regular way. I'm going to talk to a lawyer here about Selena's case. I was skeptical until I actually heard what you said, so I came here today. But I had no idea she was this much of a scumbag. From now on, I will represent Rachel and her family thoroughly. You're going to regret making an enemy of a lawyer. Oh, no, please, forgive me. Soon, a police officer arrived at our house. In fact, I had asked for an investigation for abandonment of a child by a person responsible for her protection. They had secretly recorded our conversation the last time, and this time when Mary came to our house. I also informed them that Mary would be here today. Mary was taken away by the police and arrested for abandonment of a child under protective custody. She was to live behind bars for a while. After that, it took a long time and was quite difficult, but after going through various processes, Selena was allowed to live with us. The lawyer, as he declared, demanded compensation from Mary for breaking off the engagement. Mary didn't stand a chance and was thoroughly beaten down. After her release from prison, Mary lost both her boyfriend and Selena. And because she had to work so hard to pay the alimony, she lost her good looks and gradually stopped attracting men. The other day, she stormed into our house, crying and demanding Selena back. She's my baby. Give her back. What are you talking about now? She's ours. I won't give her back to you. You're not her guardian anymore. No, not mommy. Uncle and auntie are mommy and daddy. I'm here. No, why? I am your mommy, okay? Mary had been rejected by Selena as well, and walked away dazedly as if in despair. I'm not going to let her get Selena back. For the rest of her life, I want Mary to reflect on what she did to Selena and live alone and lonely. Meanwhile, Adam and I have stopped our painful infertility treatment, and now the three of us are spending our days together with lots of laughter. I am grateful for the happy time Selena has given us, and I hope to spend the rest of my life giving her all the love I can.